Hello everyone and welcome to Necrit. In today's video, I'm going to go over how to make this cute, adorable little cherry that goes on your Among Us or really any of your little baby Lunas. I attach mine with a Velcro patch, so you are going to need some Velcro or however you want to attach it. That's what you're going to need to have. I am also going to be doing the dumb little post-it note things on my next video. I know I've been doing a lot of Among Us. I just Somebody needs to stop me. Somebody needs to tell me to stop because they're just so cute. And I love how they're all turning out and it's a lot of fun. And also it can go with a lot of other stuff. A lot of different video games have different hats that are similar to these. So it's kind of, it has a lot of different purposes that it can be used for. So that's why I've kind of been going all out and crazy for it. So for this project, you're going to need the little tiniest amount of fluff, like just honestly, this amount will probably do. You're also going to need some worsted weight yarn. I am using I Love This Cotton in both their red and olive colors. You can use whatever green tone and whatever red tone you have. This, however, is a worsted weight or size for yarn. So I would try to stick with that and try to do the same brand if you can help it. A lot of times you can mix and match, but I generally try not to. And this is cotton, which I've been falling in love with with my Amigurumi lately. So I would definitely recommend doing something with cotton and definitely any worsted weight yarn. I get a lot of questions asking me if like the size of the hook matters. It matters. You just need to find out the right one for your tensioning and what you want your stitches to look like is what I'm gonna recommend. I'm going to be using my Furls crochet hook, affiliate links down below, and I am in love with this crochet hook, but I'm using a D3 or a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. You can use really any kind of crochet hook that you'd like. It just needs to be a D3 or a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I am also using a darning needle as well as just some little unicorn snips. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to post up a little pattern preview thing right here that will describe what the base of this pattern is, but I am also going to be doing it step by step as soon as I can get my yarn ball unraveled. So let's go ahead and do that. And to start this, you're going to want to be comfortable with working in the round, doing a slip knot as well as doing a single crochet, and also just, again, generally working in the round. You're also going to want to be comfortable with increases and decreases. I'm going to show you how I go about those things, but you're going to want to generally be comfortable with those things. If you are not, I would recommend going down below in my Crochet 101 playlist. I have tutorials for all of that where I go much slower and you can check that out down there. So we're going to take our red yarn and we're making our little cherry base. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot and I'm going to make my version of a magic ring. And the way that I do that is I'm dyslexic. So I both learned the opposite of the way that I should have. And I also wrap from left to right instead of right to left. Either way will find will work out fine, but you're going to chain two. Again, I'm wrapping from left to right, but you don't have to do it this way. I'm just dyslexic and that's how I learned and that's how it's stuck. So you're going to skip the second chain and go into the first chain. I never could wrap my brain around a normal magic ring. So this is the way that I do it. So we're going to then place six single crochet inside of that one chain. Your stitch will kind of blow out and it'll make a big hole eventually. But don't worry, when you pull your tail, that will tighten up. So go back inside, two, back inside, three, back inside, four, back inside, whoop, back inside, five, and back inside six. So let's count that one, two, three, four, five, six. Our hole is huge as long as we pull our tail nice and top and not so hard that we're gonna rip our yarn. Cotton has a tendency to rip fairly easily. So now we're gonna turn our work and start working into the very first single crochet. I like to work through the front loop only, but for this pattern, it does not super matter. I just like how front loop only looks so that is why I do it with almost all of my amigurumi, unless I'm doing something else in the pattern. So I'm gonna go through the front loop and put a single crochet, and then I'm gonna go back inside that same stitch and place a second stitch. We're gonna increase every single one of our original six single crochet, so that we're gonna go from six up to 12. So we're gonna go again inside that same stitch, two, going into our third stitch here, one, Go back inside the same third stitch, two, 
gonna pull my yarn a little bit, go inside of our fourth stitch here. One and two. Fifth stitch, one and two. And our sixth stitch right here, one and two. Now I'm gonna pull my tail just a little bit more just to make sure that that thing is really stuck. And we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm then gonna take my tail and pull that through my final increase stitch. That will be used as a marker so I can keep track of where I am. And I'm gonna go around for four rounds. So rounds three through seven, we're just gonna go inside every single one of these stitches. Oop. And we're going to single crochet around and around and around and around just for the four rounds until we get to the very end and i'll be right back as soon as i get all four of those rounds done and i'll show you how we close up and how i give this thing the shape that it has and then i'll show you how i do this now all right and also if your work starts flipping out on you like that you can always just flip it back out so that the right side is facing outward so i just went around almost for one round and now i've got three more to do it's really tedious to show on camera, so I'm going to just go off camera real quick and get the rest of these stitches done. So it's 12 times 4, so that's 48 stitches that you need to do total after your increasing round. Be right back. All right, so we've gone around one, two, three, four times, and this is pretty much our last row. We just have one more row of decreasing. So basically what we do is I just kind of decrease every single stitch, but I have to stuff while I do that. And the way that I decrease is I take my hook and I go through the front loops like so. And then I pull my yarn through both of them and then just single crochet those together essentially. So we're gonna do three of those decreases, two and three and then i'm gonna let this kind of hang out for a second and i'm gonna stuff it <laughs> also if you get confused at any point in time i do have a printable pdf for this down below and for the first week that it is out you can get that for free with the coupon code down below and if you're actually watching right now and you know about the coupon code it will work on any of my patterns so that is a happy thanksgiving present to anybody who is watching and is paying attention and wants a different pattern that they've been meaning to get but they haven't been able to for whatever reason so that will be a free little coupon code for any of my patterns so again happy thanksgiving and i hope that people actually use that and enjoy it all right we are now on the last three stitches uh three decreases there's six more stitches basically so we're gonna pull that through and I'm gonna go through these right here, like so. The fifth decrease gets a little harder as you go along. And I try to make these a bit tighter than I usually would for stitches. And now the last one, like so. You still have six stitches left on your work and it's okay if this isn't as like full as you would like it. What we're going to do for right now is we're going to cut a tail about six inches really honestly that's almost 12 inches we're going to cut a long tail basically i'm going to pull that through like so and i'm going to cut my original tail just to so that we're not dealing with that just to get it out of the way put that in my tail ends and now we're going to start working with our darn needle we're going to take that and we're going to work it through every single one of these stitches i'm going to pull that like so so that i'm not dealing with the fluff and i like to go from the center and outward like so on every single one of those stitches so there's six of them this is the fourth fifth and sixth and now that we've gone through all of them we're going to go through the center of the hole like so and we're going to feed that up through the starting six stitches that you had at the very tippy top so now we're going to pull that through like so and we're going to pull it as tight and as firmly as we can without pulling it so tight that you wreck it however we're going to keep some nice tension on there and we're going to go around 
the other side and go th back through the bottom but part of it basically and I'm gonna pull that pull it tight go back up same thing this time we're gonna go up where did we go last time we went over there so we're gonna go through the center and we're gonna go through the top again this is what's creating that nice kind of pulled kind of pitted look that you get with cherries and we're gonna go through the side and I think oh ow I stabbed my fingers that's pretty much gonna be it making it nice and indented so you don't have to deal with it and now I'm gonna go up and out through the side so that it is hidden and you don't have to deal with that so now we're going to cut our tail and we're gonna work on our stem the stem is super simple super duper easy and I'm pretty happy with how the stem is going to turn out as well. I need to get this yarn out of the way. All right, so now we're going to start working with our olive yarn. This is where the olive comes in. We're going to leave a nice long tail. I like to leave a good six to eight inches. And then we're going to create a slip knot like so. So I'm going to put that slip knot onto my hook. And now I'm going to chain six. So one, two, three, four five and six and what I like to do here is that single crochets are a little too thick I want a nice thin stem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go skip the sixth chain and go into the fifth and I'm going to slip stitch into all of the rest of our chains here so take our second one slip stitch third one slip stitch fourth chain slip stitch try to do it as evenly as you can fifth stitch and slip stitch so now that you've done that we're gonna cut our tail it really was that easy to do a little stem and I'm going to take my yarn and I'm gonna pull that through now what I'm going to do to make this nice and easy is we're going to take our darning needle wherever that went I'm just gonna grab this one because I have no idea where my darning needle went they go everywhere. Oh, I've got like seven in that bowl. That could be where they're all going. All right, I put both of my strings on the bottom and we're gonna pick a top. This is our bottom, this is our top. I'm gonna take my darning needle and I'm gonna wiggle it through the center. Doesn't super duper matter, there you go. And we're gonna pull that all the way through like so. What I like to do here is I'm going to then individually take each of our strings. You could just hot glue this on as well, but I'm gonna work them going in opposite directions, like so, just to kind of get them going away from one another so I don't have to deal with them looking any which way. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. This is pretty much it when it comes to the cherry. I really like how this one and how simple it is. And you can literally make a bunch of these. And they can go right on top of your little guy. I like how this turned out. I also did an alternative version of the visor where I used blue yarn and I made a little white stripe with yarn. I actually really like how this looked. I thought the white visor would not complement against the white among Us characters, so I did the little blue. Let me know what you guys think of the blue. I think it's super cute and I like it. And next up, I'm gonna cut my tails actually here, but we're gonna be working on the dumb sticker for the uh, Among Us characters, for, especially for the zombie-esque ones. I've been watching a lot of people play the zombie version of Among Us, which is a lot of fun. And I just keep making these things as I'm watching them on YouTube. So <laughs> that's why I keep coming up with them because everybody's posting Among Us, even now, even still, it is everywhere. So I'm just gonna keep going until I run out of inspiration and until I'm no longer wanting to do things. Also, essentially I take a Velcro patch and I just hot glue it to the bottom of my cherry. And that's pretty much all there is to to this pattern. 
I want to say thank you to all my patrons who are over on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting this channel in a more financial way, you can pop over there. Don't feel stressed out if you don't want to do that. That's perfectly fine. I also have a Discord and it's a lot of fun over there. So if you're interested in joining a small community where we talk about crafts and crocheting and knitting and support each other, you can go ahead and go down in the comments down below and join us on our Discord server. We have all kinds of stuff. So social media links, everything down below. We just created a TikTok. So if you're interested in some cringy TikToks, you can go over down there as well. And that's pretty much it. Until next time, guys. Bye.